the future is yeah, yeah. to expand upon our existing reach, provide more value uh, for job economic job creation uh, within all the trades as well as public sector organizations, really create more of an educational platform to support and inspire others and uh, really work within some of the organizations like the school districts to be able to inspire some of the children or, or next generation of tradespeople to these career paths. And from friends in Department of Education, it's really just aligning with the right people and putting us on that conveyor belt of like, you should be talking here, here are the connections that we have, this is how we can make a difference. And if you just talk to this person here, he can tap you in and then feeding out that information in a much broader uh, format. And in today's world, you could filter a lot of different things. It's just trying to filter it with inspirational stories, information, and connections that could uh, drive employment opportunities. Um, what is going on, l and family? Welcome back. And if you're new here, please stay because I'm going to be speaking to two-time guest, Mr. Michael Fina from Boogie Down, Brooklyn. Did I get it right this time? That's right. We are in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> from New York City. We got to have a conversation a little bit. It's probably, it's been over a year. Uh, you were cooking up the ULA network and it continues to cook and grow and expand. He's doing amazing things, y'all, and you're going to get to learn more about it. But before, before you get to learn more about Mr. Mike, I want to give a shout out to the l &M family member who left this review on the Amazon. They said, story number four teared me up to continue moving forward. Even with the negative self-perspective and embarrassment, the reality of remaining courageously vulnerable with values of determination, they get noticed and become infused as confidence in others, even if not realized immediately. This book is truly a gift to us all, for a friend, loved ones, and those you strive to support. I don't know who left that because they didn't leave their name, but whoever you are, thank you for leaving that. And folks, if you don't know which book they're referring to, it is Becoming the Promise You're Intended to Be. Check it out. And now let's hear how my buddy, Mr. Michael Fina is doing. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Jesse. Thanks for having me on again. And just great to stay connected with you and see your success as well. <laughs> Thank you, man. So if I go back to when you and I first talked, obviously we have a connection in that we have a passion for the trades, serving the industry, a focus on labor and the people out there that are building the things and maintaining the things that we often take for granted. You were working on ULA Network. You had a full-time job, and now it sounds like you have three full-time jobs, but it's all ULA Network now. Can you catch us all up? Yes, yes. So the ULA Network's vision and mission is to support, educate, and promote union labor in our communities, aggregate content across the world, across the country, really, for inspiring stories, opportunities within these construction trades, these skill trades. And for 20 years, my background has been in banking and finance, so I've moved a lot of employer contributions, working with these organizations, had 65 different labor clients from building trades to public sector, and it's really been my family. I really love working within these organizations. And in today's world where these vocational jobs are you know, really becoming in vogue and people are seeing what these careers can really look like, making them really good money. And it spans the gamut from you know, women in the trades or just all these different groups, veteran opportunities. It just gets me so inspired because these are the next generation of career opportunities, and I just, I just want to share them with the world, really. And the platforms allowed me to do that, meet some really incredible people like yourself and other organizations across the country. And as we aggregate this, promote this, and educate the market, this is what we've been able to accomplish. So, yeah, September, yeah, September I left the bank that I've worked for almost 18 plus years to pursue this career, working with my wife and a production crew and a lot of associates and supporters, because without the supporters, I would not even be financially able to do this. And it's been just so blessed and thankful to be able to do what it is that I do today and work with people like yourselves to really promote it and find ways to do things bigger, better, and faster for our space. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned your wife, Miss Stephanie, who I got to meet, who is amazing and I know she's there cheering you on always, but I just want to make sure people don't miss that, that she has been 
a huge, huge supporter, not just supporter, but huge contributor to keeping the things going. Because I know out there you're moving and shaking and, and she's keeping things manageable and in line. Am I off target on that? No, you're hundred percent. You're like, you know, pinpoint. You, you hit it right on the head right there. It's like without my wife and I, I have her listed as the director of operations, she's helping to run and keep everything in line. And as things grow, we're just looking to bring on some additional support to really, again, make sure that we're delivering the value, reaching, trying to produce that message and meet really great people like yourself to share those inspiring stories and educate the market on these career opportunities. So. Yeah, um, love it, love God, it. So, yeah, for her, yes. Yeah, shout out to Stephanie. So, for the L and M family out there, like they need to know that it's a lot of times it seems like the face of the organization or the idea is the one that's carrying the load. It's not. And so, if you have somebody in your corner, well, maybe I'll ask you a question: Where would you be, Mike, without Miss Stephanie? I would not be here today with you right now. There's no way with the, the workload and support of my wife and helping to build out this platform, as well as so many other supporters, labor directly, to be honest, because I am really just a distributor of labor-related content and the message of all of labor and, and these careers. Early this year, I've been, I was very fortunate uh, to be able to present at the New York um, City uh, Building and Construction Trades uh, Winter Conference in Florida and talked about this particular platform and how we're aggregating and working with a lot of different organizations to promote their agenda and these particular opportunities because labor is in our communities. They're doing some phenomenal things and we want to make sure people have these fair wages and these opportunities. And I know I mentioned on previous calls and charitable organizations, every union organization set up as a nonprofit, essentially. Uh, my, Rotary, my Rotary Club, their mission and vision is service above self. I know we mentioned this before, but labor executives and these officials are working for the better benefit of these membership organizations. And I've been very fortunate and blessed to see that over the past 20 years of my career and just understanding what these opportunities are. And I know we mentioned this before, Jesse, and I'm flapping away because I get all excited. But this year as well, I I had the, the great fortune of presenting some high school students with their certificate of achievements. Great yeah. high school. Shout out to Jim Foster for allowing me or asking me and the whole school and faculty. But that was all connected through the New York City District Council of Carpenters. You know, these building trades and these open houses that are celebrating these careers through open houses within the high schools to say, this is what a job could look like if college is not for you. You just see people's eyes and just know the skill set of some of these high school students. They could build houses. They could do stuff that I could not even imagine. And to see that, it's just really awesome and refreshing for me. And I just want to be able to promote that the best way I can. Yeah. And that's, I guess, the key or maybe the root in which helps me stay connected to you and get excited. Because, you know, every time you and I talk, it's like (laughs) nuclear explosion, energy and ideas. Uh, But you do 100% value and, and see inspiration. I'll say more than just see, you see it and spread the inspiration about the opportunities in the trade, supporting your local labor force, the local uh, labor enterprises and groups there. Now, I want to make sure that the folks that are listening, give them a little bit of reality in that it's not like you just decided to do this and it just all happened. I mean, you've got a bunch of exciting things that are happening now, but can you give us a little dose of reality in terms of what you felt like and what y'all, you and Stephanie as a family unit, we're going through when you decided to do it 100% full time. What was that like? Was it easy? No, it's it very scary. <laughs> but, you know, my labor family really surrounded me with so much support. This platform was built out during COVID. I mean, mm. stuck at home, not knowing what to do. You're watching labor work within the toughest of times. You know, municipalities, school, all, all these organizations rethinking how things are done. And I just wanted to help. And how do you help? It's like either I couldn't go out. So when Hurricane Sandy and things like that, you lend your time, you roll up your sleeves. But in this particular case, I'm stuck at home and just saying, just want to celebrate everybody that's working and and trying to get through the worst of times during COVID. And I started liking things online, but then started to aggregate those, that message 
and then created a platform to be able to celebrate that message. And that's where we started to really organize my friends in labor to really create something that I believe is special. And, and it means the world to me to be able to celebrate these particular jobs, like I mentioned. And 20 years working with 65 different organizations in the public sector too, from transit workers to court officers and, and, and firemen. Seeing these opportunities, it's really trying to connect the dots and share my experience as well as the connections that I have to try to create career opportunities for others within our community. Yeah. So you say aggregate. What I get to see like on the ULA network, the Instagram page and so forth on the socials is you're promoting the content of your clients and supporters and sponsors, et cetera. Did I get that right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I like to say I'm an aggregator and amplifier of labor-related content. So we want to amplify that message out and just collaborate with like-minded individuals like yourself. There's so many different people that we're seeing on the socials that are doing such phenomenal work. I'm just trying to figure out how do you connect and then grow a business and doing that as well. Because we got the vlogs, the podcast, all the different socials to really push out this particular message. So we just want to yeah. run along those particular lines and do it bigger, better, faster, and connect that message with the world. So Yeah, yeah. And so I'm assuming that reposting, maybe even producing content for labor, they're finding that to be extremely helpful. Yes. You're watching labor communicate in different ways through applications, social media, different venues, as opposed to just print and events. Now we have these virtual events, educational seminars and webinars that are very informative to labor members. Because if you think about it, if you have a, an organization of 10,000 members, you're not going to meet everybody at a membership meeting on a monthly basis. So how do you yeah. disseminate a lot of that information, the value and benefits that are out there as well? And I just see that there's ways to do things through our hybrid world of being connected face to face. And that's I love being at events and meeting people. That's how work gets done. But also being able to utilize social media to broaden that particular reach and serve the masses really to educate them about what's going on. And if they want to be involved, how they could support and be connected. Yeah. So I've, I've been able to see several different clips and it interviews, the production values, high, high, high level. Nowhere near, like I'm way down bottom of the yeah, barrel. You're doing, you know you're doing, good work. You're doing phenomenal <laughs> work. We're learning as we go. Yeah. So some of them, the, the ones that stand out to me, they, because they stand out from all the rest of the content that comes through the feed, right? Is it looks like, I guess this is kind of a question. It looks like you're at an event or some venue because people are suited up. They got ties being, looking ultra dignified. The background's beautiful. So I guess my part of my question is when you go to these events, are you going with the purpose and intent to sit down with people to record them and celebrate them? Or is it something that they request and you make that happen? What does that look like if somebody were to want to say, hey, Mike, help me out? It's a little bit of both. My job's to be entrenched in what labor is all about and what their mission is. And a lot of the things that are happening within the North American building and construction trades, the Apprentice Readiness Collective, and all these particular opportunities from women in the building trades to helmets to hard hats, these veteran career opportunities, the high school consortium for workers' education and pathways to apprenticeship. These are all initiatives that I see create opportunities for me to help promote, get involved the best way I can, and celebrate these careers and kind of work along lines um, of that message and, and mission. Because that rising tide raises all ships, and I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for all of us uh, to celebrate these opportunities and, and promote them in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. And you also in prep, you were telling me y'all are now, you officially have a nonprofit designation, yeah? We work within the nonprofit space. And last year we had our first event raising money for an organization, Helmets to Hard Hats. And it was near and dear to me. My father was a veteran. He wanted a passing during COVID. And the support I got from labor, helping my mother get the DIC benefits for health care, and just sitting at home just understanding who's taking care of me in my career. And I just want to find a way to give back to labor that's always supported me and create a career and an opportunity for me to do that. So it just means the world for me to be able to be associated with some really incredible people and try to drive their mission and ride their coattails and work with them in the best possible way. Because I find inspiration in a lot of these 
members, union members through adversity and being homeless in some cases, or just not finding the right career and finding a family and a home in some of these labor union organizations to really help them educate them and give them all the tools that they need to be successful and grow within their career makes me really proud. And yeah. that's where I want to be. And these are the groups I'm trying to connect. And the, some of the sponsors that play in this particular field and support these initiatives or have been my, my backers and kind of helpers and sponsors to get these initiatives off the ground. So I'm very thankful to everybody that's in my corner and just giving me some words of wisdom and support to keep moving things forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the website right now. It looks like you got some big events coming up, <laughs> events and conferences. So you started this during COVID, then you took the leap, made it a full-time thing back in September. So here we are nine months in. What are some of the big lessons you've learned that you didn't expect, like the unexpected lessons you learned from taking the leap? Check it out, hometowners. So Primo, he's a little bit embarrassed about like asking for some backup, you know, some esquina. And so I want to hit you up. And like, if, if you're digging this content, just give it a like, give it the stars or, or leave a comment, you know. But if you really, really want to see Primo, like get all chiflado, like for the reels, hit him up on the socials, homes. Like if you give him a comment in the socials and let him know what you thought about the thing, well, he's going to light up, but only do it if you mean it, because, yeah, you already know how Primo is. Se cree mucho el cabrón. So if you could do that, if you could leave a comment or a rating or the stars or whatever, that would be cool, man. I knew it was a lot of work. I'm ready to do that. I'm all in for that. And friends and family and people that know me know that I have the FOMO. I want to be everywhere. I want to know what's going on, and I want to be involved as best I can. But just talking too much, I guess, trying to lay out the future before the future has actually happened and creating a business plan, a model that I believe we can get off the ground. I'm open and, and honest and as I can. And now I just want to just make sure I'm working with the right people for the right cause, for the right reasons, and then put everything out to, together to support the labor organizations that I work with and the communities that they support and serve. It's really cool to see some of the, the connections with the labor and community and the economic job creations that are there. Me getting connected to some like offshore wind economic developments and careers and how that's bringing in labor opportunities and being able to promote those initiatives. It's really cool. Yeah. So it sounds like the way you select people, it's not just anybody. You're looking for some specific ingredients with regard to the people that you want to work alongside or, or partner up and collaborate on stuff. And so if you had to say maybe the two most important ingredients that signal to you, like, yeah, I want to work with that person, what would those be? Well, I think, Jesse, we talk about serving others and finding mm -hmm. the opportunity to be part of something bigger and supporting people that could use the help and advice yeah. and just give back to the organizations that have supported me in my career, my family. And, and what's beautiful is trying to build a career and doing that. That's the ultimate goal. And, and I know it makes me feel inspired every day to be able to wake up and find ways to find career opportunities for people that need it. And just see through social media posts and DMs, somebody saw something posted out and said, how do I get in part of this particular organization? And then connecting the dots with an apprenticeship or a business manager and them actually getting the job oh. and so that they're off and working. And it, these are people that we may have never met physically, but just connecting them with to other people and know that job they've received, they're making a living. You, you can't ask for anything better like that. And those are the things that mean the most to me. Yeah, I imagine it just gets you fired up to do more. And so you also mentioned, well, before I go there, and I just want to hammer home on that point of like first getting clear, right? Get clear about the type of people that you want to collaborate with, partner with, whatever words you want to use there, because uh, you've probably seen this, Mike, but I know I have seen it a bunch where people reach out 
indicating that they want to do something together. But I don't always say yes because they seem to have a motive that I'm not okay with. And when they come with me with that kind of weird energy, I'm like, I can introduce you to some people, but I'm not going to work with you because they don't have that spirit of service. Like for me, just like you said, the ultimate thing is if you're, when people are working in service to others, I am happy to contribute. I'm happy to support, not just support, but like play a part, time, resources, et cetera, to helping them launch or take off. But if they're not, if it's clear to me that they're not focused on serving, they don't get on the list. <laughs> and so for the family, l and family out there, I'm not saying that you have to be selecting based on whether they want to serve or not. What I'm saying is get ultra clear about what kind of characteristics you're looking for in the people that you're going to partner with. Because when you start something, people get energized. It's almost magnetic. Do you find it, Mike, that you've been out there for a little while now, you got some legs under you, but the more you go, the more visible you become, the more people you attract to contribute to your path. Do you see that at all? Absolutely. For me now, it's these associations that are serving these labor organizations that I work with today. And just seeing it, it becomes even a tighter knit family or, or people that you want to support. It's like, how do I get involved? How, how can I lend support? Because you're working together for a bigger cause. And it is, yeah. you, you are marketing yourself essentially because you're being part of this whole group and this initiative. And collectively, we're stronger together. I can't do this alone. And the amount of support that I've gotten from labor directly and then the service providers that support labor as well has been overwhelming. And it's really yeah. trying to create that structure, Jesse, to say, all right, let's put this together the right way. Be mindful. The people that you've made mention of as well, are we working with the right people for the right cause to build that foundation that's ironclad? And then you can start to integrate a lot of the other pieces to build it out bigger and better. It takes a village of people to be able to facilitate yeah. that. It can't be done with me. I don't have the knowledge, power, but you got to outsource that. You got to find your team. <laughs> You got to organize the right people. You got to get a little revenues first before you could actually start. What are you going to, how are you going to pay for certain things? And then just understanding a P&L and how things are going to be built out from a business entity. So you're learning everything at the same time. It's like you're in, it's like a major fire drill, but I love it. It's cool. I'm learning. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, no doubt. Like going off on your own, doing your own thing. There is so much to learn. That they don't even tell like half of the things I don't even I'm sure I still got piles and piles to learn, but that'll I'll deal with that when it comes. Now, obviously, you're passionate about this. You like you give a damn, you're helping people, you're making real impact out there on people's lives, on their careers, and so forth. And so I know for me, when I'm in those situations, I want more. I want to do more. Like, what else can I do? How else can I contribute? And there's times where I will forget that I'm human and I need to rest and I need to recover so that I can continue serving. How do you handle that, Mr. Michael Fina? That's a good question. I don't know. I, that the question, I have no <laughs> idea. We've been running since September, but even before that. And again, thank God to my wife. I told you once before, but we talk about trips. The trips that I go on are really conferences for laborers as a general. So like, hey, we're going on a vacation to Florida. But there's a conference or we're going to some other nice place in DC or Saratoga. It's generally a conference, but you're uh, with the same people that you really want to support and work with. So for me, it doesn't feel like it's a job. It's just trying to figure out ways to do more. But like you said, you need to be able to just turn everything off, enjoy the people that you're with and just, I guess, have some kind of personal life. I go to a lot of golf outings now. It just seems like every, there's a scholarship golf outing every Monday or towards the end of the week. Right, right. But I get, and I love golf. It's, it, but you're going there to uh, network, meet other people, and then find opportunities to serve and support some of the initiatives that are going on as well. So it's business development, it's networking, and just making sure that you're supporting the causes that are all relative to labor as well. Because you know every event that you go to is essentially a fundraiser. So you're going to all these basically charity events um, yeah. that could be golf outings dinner events, luncheons, and again, I just enjoy it. It's a blessing to get to meet all these different people and create commerce and opportunities in doing that. Yeah. And it's hard when you're doing the things that you love around the type of people that you love, 
the line between work and relaxation gets very blurred, right? Because you're living in fulfillment and contribution. And so it can get blurred. I'll say this. I know when I went up to New York, when was it? December, maybe? I don't even remember. But I got to meet you and Miss Stephanie in person. And y'all like, the most amazing host took me, feels like all over New York, gave me the history on the different buildings where y'all got married. We had some delicious brunch. I felt like I had connected with a tour guide that specifically designed a little trip around the city just for me. <laughs> you remember that? We were walking and talking. It, it had to be, it was a warm day too. It couldn't have been in December. So it must've been maybe September, October, uh, sometime. Yeah, it was warm. It is right. The sun was out. Yup. But we walked almost like 10 miles. We literally walked around the city. <laughs> On the high line, you know, everything that we, we saw. And then I know you had a dinner event that night, so hopefully you were able to stay up for that. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, was, I took a nap, and then I went to the dinner thing. It was awesome, man. It, it, it was a good time. I appreciate you and Stephanie for taking oh, the time. Pleasure. It was great to meet you personally, really. That was the first time we got a chance to meet yeah, it was super cool. So with all the great things that you're doing out there, what is the, like if in your craziest dreams, what does the future look like for you and ULA Network? The future is yeah, really yeah. to expand upon our existing reach, provide more value uh, for job, economic job creation uh, within all the trades as well as public sector organizations, really create more of an educational platform to support and inspire others and really work within some of the organizations like the school districts to be able to inspire some of the children or, or next generation of tradespeople to these career paths. And from friends in the Department of Education, it's really just aligning with the right people and putting us on that conveyor belt of like, you should be talking here, here are the connections that we have, this is how we can make a difference. And if you just talk to this person here, he can tap you in and then feeding out that information in a much broader uh, format. And in today's world, you could filter a lot of different things. It's just trying to filter it with inspirational stories, information and connections that could uh, drive employment opportunities. Um, and that's yeah, yes. my, my ultimate goal. Create that pipeline. So you mentioned uh, Department of Education and earlier in the conversation, you mentioned you were able to hand out some awards to high school students. How much time or interest do you have on, I think you mentioned that there there's conversations around these high schools adjusting their uh, curriculum to better prepare the students to enter the workforce in the trades. Absolutely. You're seeing that now happening on much bigger, broader space. Even prior to me getting into this particular field, I never saw or realized how many trade fairs that have been starting to really populate. And some mm. of the school districts are looking for some of the training senators to host or come to the schools to talk about what these careers could really look like. And for me, I've been very fortunate. I know a lot of the different training centers within the New York market under the New York City building trades and really try to help be a connector where I can and really learn for my, myself about some of these careers in more detail because each individual trade has multiple fields that you can go into. You talk about a carpenter, electrician, plumber, bricklayer, whatever the case may be. You, you could be a drafter, you could be an installer, you could do all these different things. And what is your career set and goal and how do you get yourself involved? And these are the things that we, we're hoping to share or have conversations with people that are already in these particular career paths and having them share their stories is really what helps inspire me and keep me going every day. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to get in touch with you for help with connecting or to sponsor or for services that you provide, what's the best way for them to do that? It DM me on Instagram, Union Labor Advisory Network. Email me at mfina at ULA Network. Call me on my cell at 631-624-1132. Any of those mediums, it can help. Actually, you can go to our website and leave a message. Follow, like, or subscribe to our sites and socials. We are on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, building out some TikTok stuff with some really cool stuff as well. So again, we're trying to build out all the socials to be able to extend the reach that we have and work collectively with like-minded individuals like yourself and others that are out there to really just share and be that, that influencer and evangelist for these opportunities, yeah. really. 
Yeah, man. Oh, I love so everywhere. There's no excuse not to connect with ULA Network because yeah. there's everywhere. You even got Mike's phone number. And I know I know that you're totally down to help and contribute in, in whichever way you possibly can. If you can't do it directly, you'll find somebody that can help whomever's looking for whatever. So what did I forget to ask? I don't know, Jess. She asked a lot of questions. We got through a lot of different things. Hopefully a lot of people know exactly what it is I do now. But really just if there's people out there that have some inspiring stories that want to share that message, obviously to reach out. Been really fortunate to meet so many different people and podcasters across the country. Yeah. Really just want to figure out how to collaborate and share their message. And we've connected with so many different people. Been really fortunate and just trying to do it do more of it. Obviously, the bigger, the better. And filtering out this message and amplifying it to the world is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. So I can't yeah. thank you enough for everything that you do. And we've connected, again, it's got to be like two years, three years ago. Yeah, a minute. <laughs> we're still connecting. I'm like, Jesse, I need help. Or we're good. We need to get somewhere here. And then I told you I was leaving. And then to be able to set up a charitable foundation of 501c3, I never even thought that was even a thing to be able to do. And then through the thankful organizations, Novak Franchella, one of the accounting firms, Steve Kramer and Associates, the attorney firm that got it all together. But these are the things now we build out a board of directors and really try to find ways to do things yeah. in a better way. We're always learning. So there's always a better way to do things. Ah, that's a, So I remember there was one question I had. It slipped. It popped back up. I know you're in New York. If somebody wants to work with you in the labor space outside of New York, is that a go or no go? Uh, it's an absolute go. I mean, again, trades go across the country, Canada, international, really. And Ooh. we meet people across the country that have these stories that are sharing their message and inspiring yeah. others as well. I mean, New York is the Mecca. is a big town, labor town, union town. But you're meeting so many different people. There's just so many out there, and I'm just so thankful to know them all. And Paul Diaz chasing the hook and again, the iron worker group. Some of the guys that really inspired me and in looking at these trades and the photos that they're po posting out, the history of what these labor organizations have done, it really means a lot. If, like I mentioned, I feel like I'm learning every day as I am working, meeting people and distributing labor's message in, in an amplified way and the way yeah. uh, it's the ULA platforms intended to grow. Yeah, man. Amazing. Love the work that you're doing. Like you said, we met... And it's like, oh, yeah, we, we're going to do something. <laughs> Maybe stir up a little trouble, but at least we're going to stir something. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I want to be part of your tribe. You got a nice tribe. You got a lot of people doing a lot of inspiring work and really good things. And I'm watching you grow, learn. And I'm just, I'm, again, I'm sitting in the background just trying to absorb as much information as I can and just listen to inspiring people that you have on your platform. That's it. One of the things I appreciate about you is your humility. Because I've learned the hard way. <laughs> when I'm full of pride, I don't learn very much, right? Like you can't pour into a full cup. <laughs> they used to tell me that when I was a kid, like, man, you, you can't learn anything if you know everything. I'm like, what are you talking about? But your energy, your open-mindedness, you, like you said, you're learning, you're asked questions. You don't hesitate to reach out and contact people and get support. I think that's like the ultimate skill is to reach out to people because that in itself is intimidating and then ask for help. It's another level. Like that's just a whole nother level of integrity from my perspective to be able to ask somebody else for help and for the purpose of helping others. So in my case, in my book, you're the ultimate, Mr. Mike, you and Miss Stephanie. I know Stephanie's there. Thank Listen, you. I got to make sure we're not forgetting about her. She's over there. <laughs> She's over there. Um, awesome. Hi, Jesse. Pop your head in there. Come over here. I'll have her come in. Just pop her head in. Yeah. <laughs> Can I give her a shout out, especially at the end, very end? There, there she is. Oh, oh hi, Stephanie. Oh, thanks to Jesse. <laughs> yes, but, yeah. Thanks to this one over here. Again, helping to build out the platform. And that's she's part of the team. It's all good. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, did you have fun? Always, Jesse. Dang, you stuck around all the way to the end. And I hope the reason you stuck it like all the way through was because you were getting a lot of value out of the conversation. I always get at least one, most of the time, a handful 
of good nuggets, good ideas, good perspectives that I can take and apply into my life going forward. That's the whole point. I want to share that with you guys and also highlight the amazing people that they are. And I want to end this by saying, if you feel like you've been living out a script that was written for somebody else and you feel like you're in the wrong skin, I know that life. And all I did was numb myself to make it through to another day, which if you're there, you know how hopeless that feels. I want to recommend that you check out Becoming the Promise You Are Intended to Be. The stories in this book will help you know that you're not alone. They're my personal stories, like the real stuff that I went through, and I'm sharing them because it helps keep me sober. It helps me contribute my gifts and my talents in service to others. It helps me turn my failures, my shame, my embarrassment into something useful and positive. So check it out. Be kind to yourself, be cool, and we'll talk at you next time. Peace!